At one time, the Martian atmosphere was probably 100 times thicker and rich in gases from the volcanic activity. But because of the planet's low gravity, part of its original atmosphere has been lost to space. And because of the extreme cold, some of the atmospheric gases have been frozen. Some carbon dioxide has been absorbed into the surface soil and some frozen out on the polar ice caps. Some of the original nitrogen may be bound in the soil as nitrates. Oxygen has combined with iron to make the red soil and rocks. As thin as it now is, the atmosphere plays a major role in shaping the planet's landscape. Winds must blow very hard, up to 100 miles an hour, just to move dust particles. They do their work slowly. Dust storms, which can shroud the planet for months, cause little change. Over millions of years, however, their steady activity created this vast belt of dunes, several hundred miles across, surrounding the North Pole. Downfaulting in erosion, created great canyons like the Valles Marineris, about five miles deep, 150 miles wide, and as long as from New York to Los Angeles. It is believed to have been forming for billions of years. Erosional processes are much slower on Mars than on Earth, making Mars a geologist's paradise. Many areas have remained in almost pristine condition for billions of years like these outflow channels, tens of miles wide and a mile deep. There are also channels like large riverbeds with tributaries, some over 1,000 miles long and 100 miles wide, with teardrop-shaped islands. They vary greatly in age and were probably formed during periods when Mars was warm enough to have liquid water and precipitation in the form of snow or rain. In earlier eras, Ground ice or permafrost may have been melted by variations in solar radiation and geothermal heat. This released water may have collected in huge artesian basins until it broke loose in titanic floods. After briefly running its course, the water disappeared back into the soil. Today we believe much of the water is still there, locked frozen beneath the surface. It is unaffected by the planet's climate changes and they can be drastic. The temperature from season to season can range 180 degrees, from cold to super cold, minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Both poles have widespread polar caps, primarily frozen carbon dioxide, dry ice. In the summer, the carbon dioxide disappears from the North Pole, leaving an underlying remnant of permanent water ice. This high plateau region is known as Bathosis Bulge, the site of three of the largest volcanoes of Mars. They may look familiar, but their size is staggering. Six miles high, sitting on a plateau four miles high. On a planet about half the diameter of Earth, they dwarf our tallest mountains. This is Olympus Mars, the largest volcano known in our solar system. It towers 16 miles above the Martian surface, almost three times higher than Mount Everest. Over billions of years, lava has spread hundreds of miles over the surrounding plains. We believe the surface of this volcano is young and that its latest eruptions occurred in the relatively recent past, within a few hundred million years. That's because we see few impact craters. By contrast, the ancient uplands of Mars are heavily studded with craters, preserved for over three billion years in a stable Martian crust. They were caused by impacting meteorites. Their ejecta, the material thrown out on impact, has a distinctive flowing pattern, as though melted permafrost turned to a slurry of water and dirt and spread around the crater. Mars also has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Perhaps they're asteroids captured by the Martian gravity. 
They are among the darkest objects in the solar system. Both are uniformly gray. On Deimos, the surface layer of dust gives the satellite a smoother appearance. Phobos, however, is dotted with rugged craters of all sizes and at one time was nearly fragmented by a colliding meteor. We can see the crater and the cracks today. At the outset of the Viking mission, it was hoped that the orbiters and landers would survive the Martian environment for 90 days. The Viking 1 orbiter continued to operate for four years. In its extended mission, it made 1,489 trips around Mars, and with the Viking 2 orbiter, sent back 52,000 pictures and mapped almost all of the planet's surface. The Viking 1 lander, its primary mission complete after the first three months, continued operating after six and a half years of service, providing daily weather reports and photographs. Its signal finally stopped. The mission was an unqualified triumph. We know more about Mars than any of the other planets in the solar system, and we are left with no illusions. In our solar system, we are alone. Viking has also shown us that in spite of its formidable environment, Mars is the most Earth-like of all the planets. Someday, it may even have intelligent life, us exploring a new frontier.